right, suck in your guts, guys. We're the Ghostbusters. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And I'm Ryan. What? This is confusing. But it is also the Concept Crucible podcast. That's right. We pulled another Ryan from the roster. I'm here with Ryan Consul. Yeah, I was not able to hold my own weight, so we needed to expand. Yeah, costumer extraordinary and world's leading expert on Valyrian steel. Nobody has tried to contest that claim yet. Among other things, um, Ryan, you are also a writer. I occasionally. A, the, an occasional programmer a build and builder of things. That is also true. Um, street performer. Street performer, as we proved the other weekend. Science teacher. Yep. Uh, Juggler. Yep. Unicyclist. Dancer. Yep. Yep. Ryan does basically everything. I do many things. Uh, most of the things they don't do. So Ryan does basically everything. Yeah. Uh, but that is that is what today's podcast is about: is how to do all the things uh, meaningfully, and how to not do it and not hate yourself for it. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know about you, the viewers, or you, the listeners, and the, the kind of the crowds that you run in, but. Uh, there's always there's always that element of, in the social groups of um, the busies, the busybodies, the people who are so busy doing everything and holds on to it like a, a badge of courage, a badge of honor, and uh, that that's entirely different from what we're thinking about here. They're they're definitely not synonymous, but we have to make sure that we're we're able to, to capture our ideas well, given how late it is at night. <laughs> <laughs> because we were busy earlier. Yeah. Now we were eating pizza and talking about video games. These are important things. It's These true. are things. They are things. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I, I want to get too deep into the, the segregation. I'm probably one of those busy people, at least some of the time, where I'm like, oh, you know. But it's that notion of I, I don't just want to be busy. I want to do things. Um, and we all sort of try and do a lot of things. I make a lot of videos. I write less blog posts than I would prefer to. Occasionally make a podcast. I occasionally make a podcast with uh, a Ryan, at least one. <laughs> well, except, oh wait, no, never mind. Even that time when I wasn't around when you were doing the Halloween episode. Yeah, we did the audio podcast. We had a Ryan. We're we had this Ryan, Ryan here. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not a podcast without a Ryan. Yeah, got to maintain quota. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the government is, is I get a workfare grant for for including Ryan's. It's a tough life if you're a Ryan, I understand. Sure, there's too many of us. The market's flooded. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, I write music and I, I attempt to run more than one D and D game because I am foolish. Uh, I try to do a bunch of volunteering and you know, I serve on a couple of boards and a lot of a lot of sort of things. And it does make it sort of hard to do all the things that I want to do. In fact, it makes it impossible to do all the things I want to do. Mm-hmm. And difficult to do all the things that I am doing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know that I ever want to do less. Which is probably more of a personal failing than anything else. What do you do? Uh, right now, I hold down two jobs. Um, I review ethics applications for community-based research. Um, I am on the grants committee for the Community Foundation, so we just finished doing our selections for the year for which uh, charities and nonprofits are going to be receiving funding for their projects. Yeah, I heard. Um, I'm an aspiring maker tinkerer. <laughs> uh, I spent the last year or so trying to learn new skills and experience new things. Um, but I think that's the core of the things I'm doing right now. There's probably more. I mean, D&D or board games, card games. Yeah. The notion of having fun and having a life. Yeah. Hanging yeah, out in places where you don't have an agenda and minutes. Some of those things we do have agendas and minutes. Yes. Like Dungeons and Dragons. We have both of those things. Yeah. Sometimes mostly informal. Mm-hmm. But I think that's one of the things. There's people that sort of are busy all the time on the treadmill of life. And people that do things. I think part of that separ- separation is people that do things take note that the things that they are doing must be things, and the things that are just running on the treadmill discount many of their uh, pastimes as things they are doing. Like, what are you doing tonight? Nothing. I'm just 
going to my kid's soccer game, making dinner, mm-hmm. um, like, watching like my favorite show. Real life stuff. Yeah. I would note that, that most of the people I know who sort of do things, air quotes, for those of you who are listening, um, we are, I think you guys will agree, sort of routinely semi-bad at regular life things. I, well, maintenance takes a lot of time. Yes. Um, so if you're going to do lots of things, you need to do less of other things. Like feed yourself. Like get haircuts. Yeah. Um, I don't know. At the same time, I would want to push back. The, I know sometimes in the moment things are mundane, but sometimes when I sit back and reflect, I just think like, man, I'm doing some really cool stuff. Like, do you ever, do you ever get that? So for example, you've mentioned it earlier in the, in the pre-show with making, you know, armor for you is, is mundane. But when you sit back and think about it, like don't, don't, does that not fill you with a sense of awe or sense of like, like, wow, I do this or I made that or Uh, sometimes, but very often. Um, and this is why it's so easy to get me to just give you a thing that I made is that learning to do the new thing and getting that new skill that was the amazing thing. And now I have this thing, and, well, I could make another one, and that mm-hmm. would be mundane. And now that I know how to do a thing, it becomes mundane, and I forget yeah. that it is exceptional or unusual or yeah. even interesting to other humans. I suppose that's true. I mean, uh, a proxy example in my case was when I started making bread. Um, and I'm still not particular. It is a mystical wizard thing. Yeah. Bread, I- bread podcast will come out later this summer. Uh, but that's just it. Is uh, I mean, I'm not particularly good at it. I'm still in the learning phase of it. But it seems like anybody who's never made bread looks at you know a photo of a, a loaf of bread that I've made and they think, "Wow, it's amazing." And uh, yeah, actually, I, I, I think I, put that bread in my body. Yeah, you, bread, food is different. <laughs> food food put, is why am I put, not eating that put right that now? Bread in my body. Why why is this a picture? Uh, see, why I, did you bring me a picture? Of, you have now described a picture of bread and offered me no actual delicious bread. <laughs> but but see, you talk about armor, and I think why am I not out slaying dragons right now with the armor that you've created? Because dragons aren't real. What? Sorry. I've been tinfoiling my house for years. Keeping also, them away. Santa Claus isn't real, Ryan. Ah. I don't believe you. That seems fun. This is quickly turned into Make Children's Cry podcast. That's every podcast. Oh, um, also, Jim has a blog post of her. Yeah, a blog and post we, we did that. a series on, on, on Santa Claus a few years ago, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and the, the sort of ethics of Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Um, but our, we, we skipped right past our icebreaker, which was, what is the thing that you don't do that you want to do? Like, this is not a thing that you want to do better or think. This is like that thing that you keep sort of wanting to do that you don't make time for because you're like have all this other stuff or I mean because part of it I think is is I don't want to say knowing what to set aside but knowing knowing what you have set aside and evaluating whether or not you want to set it aside yeah it's it's, it's the idea of opportunity cost mm-hmm. there's always that thing that you want to do second most yeah. the secret to making lots and lots of stuff don't value your time very highly mm. <laughs> Does it have to be um, a well thought out, or can it be generic and vague? I I don't make the rules because I do have two answers. Like who normal. makes the rules? Well, make, tell us both answers, and we'll tell you which. Yeah, no. Right Huck afterwards. always has two answers. I do always have two answers. Bro. All right. Okay. I, I, and we will judge you accordingly. A specific thing that I want to do, I'm kind of in the process of doing, but I haven't done yet, uh, is building that robotic arm I was talking about. Right. You know, I want to go down to Quartz Lab. Uh, have somebody show me and help me uh, do the 3D printout of the of the um, physical parts for it, and then order the various electronics parts. And next season, the episode where we cut Huck's arm off and replace it with a bionic one. Yeah, we can that? do that at Quartz Lab too. Yeah. We have the technology. I mean, can I become Mega Man? The six million dollar Ryan. Six million won't build us as much as it would back in the day. <sighs> well, fine. Uh, so that's that's one concrete thing. But one other idea I've been bandying around is starting a side hustle, and actually, like maybe trying to do something that would get. Are you are you describing selling drugs? Well. That would be a side hustle. It's not the one I'm going for. Okay, okay. Uh, that seems good. But I, I've been toying with the idea of maybe trying to, I don't know, pick a skill, become like, or like a, a skill that I have and try to somehow just make a little bit of money off of it. Just mm-hmm. as an exercise of starting up a small business on my own. Yeah. You know, not anything that I have any kind of 
long-reaching goals. Just something that I can... That it'll put skin in the game that I have... I'll invest a little bit in there, but not so much that I need it to succeed in order for me to, to actually make okay. it work. So I don't want to quit my day job on a side hustle. I want to do it on the side to expand my skills, yeah. learn a little bit about business and whatnot. So that's it's just in. Huck is the new bass player in Wutsu Riot. Well, I did it for the Christmas video when I broke my leg. <laughs> I'm the drummer. Note, we do not have any Wootsuit Riot songs with a drum line. <laughs> One day. When, when you, is, is that your goal? Is your goal, is your no. thing you want to do, become our drummer? No. Uh, my, my goal is, is to Kaylee actually... Will, Kaylee will fight you. All right, she can, yeah, that's fine. I can take Kaylee. Next season, the podcast where Ryan fights Kaylee and loses. It's going to be great. Um, no, uh, is to pick up the violin. I have a violin. It's at my house. I have played it a bit a year ago. I have meant to play it more every day for the last year and a half. Have you ever cosplayed as Sherlock Holmes? I feel like that's where this is going. No. I, I don't want to grow the hair out. I don't like wigs. You don't have to wear a wig. Wear a hat. A silly hat. Yeah, a deer hat. A deer I hat. also don't like uh, cosplays with hats. Ah. Uh, uh, fair enough. Ba- basically spending a day inside a uh, building full of sweaty humans with a toque on. Wearing Victorian a- wool. <laughs> Done that. Sucks. <laughs> Just do a bunch of heroin. You'll be fine. <laughs> what? Stop. What is going on? This He's starting up a side hustle right now. <laughs> this is neither the time nor place. <laughs> Speaking of taking off your Victorian wool. All right, sorry. Come on. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, what were you working Don't on? Don't tap the table. <laughs> I, uh... That's fine. All right. Um, no, while, while that's going on, if you're listening to the audio podcast, nothing is happening right now. Do not go and watch us on YouTube. Also, don't call the police. Um, no, I want to learn how to dance. Um, I love dancing. Uh, I am pretty good at it because I am a sort of physical learner. So anything I can sort of watch people do or learn to do once or twice with my feet or my hands, I can do pretty well. Uh, a lot of it has to do with confidence. I was at a wedding on Saturday. Um, it was a superhero wedding. And it was a, lot, a lot of my friends were there and a lot of them are really good dancers. The bride and the groom were, were super good dancers. And... Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who is who is a a dancer, like a contemporary dancer, and I'm, I just come from a street performing thing. I have my juggling balls. I'm like the only time when I am graceful and confident is when I am juggling at least three balls. <laughs> at which point I can move fluidly and wonderfully and never trip over myself. But if I don't have anything to do with my hands and my concentration. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so I want to learn. That feels like a wonderful segue into busyness because if you don't, if you have less, less than three balls, you have no idea what the hell to do with yourself. It's true. And if you reach a certain peak, it's too much to handle. Yeah, I mean, five is a lot. Did you plan that as a segue? No. That was just perfect. You just stepped on it, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that is that, that is, you're right though. That that I mean part of it is the sort of na- the 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 notion of juggling, um, and how and how you juggle. I, I I find that thinking about it as juggling is both the right and wrong way to do it, because um, lots of people regard juggling as doing a whole lot of different things at the same time. You're moving your feet. You're moving your hands. You're keeping track of three balls. You know, you're, you're paying attention to what's going on around you. If you're a performer, you're looking past that and paying attention to none of it and looking at people in the eyes. Talking to them. Talking, telling jokes, Banter. being funny, keeping children from getting out from under your feet. Uh, that is definitely a thing that has happened to me in the past. Often when I had someone else on my shoulders. Um, and there, But there's a tendency for, for juggle muggles... Which is a word I had just made up. I like it. Yeah. yeah. To to look at that as, as, wow, you're doing so many things all at once. But when you are a juggler, you're not. You're doing one thing. Yes. The and point it, of it is that it's all one thing. And it doesn't work until it becomes one thing. You cannot juggle until it is a single thing. 
Yeah. If you have to think about all three balls, two of them are on the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't engage with an audience until the balls juggle by themselves when you're not looking. And that is, I'm sure, leading into a deeper point. Well, we it's, just tangent off and juggling and talk about no, that it's, the rest. It's, yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, I mean juggle? The, unfortunately, not the kind you're talking about. <laughs> Next season, the podcast where we teach how to juggle. It'll be good times. <laughs> Lots of promises. You can't learn, you Can can't, I do that in 45 minutes? No, you can't learn, in an, learn it in an evening. It is impossible. Okay, yeah. then if you can learn it in an evening, you already knew how to juggle. We, we might have to do like 15 yeah. hours and then edit that down into a Next class. season, Eye of the Tiger montage of Huck <laughs> learning how to juggle. Be a good time. But... Uh, no, I mean, I mean, the notion of of how to do it, of how to do lots and lots of things and not burn out or die or just be miserable. I've definitely done the do all the things and be miserable mm-hmm. yeah. uh, during grad school. Um, I find is you you find the thing that makes them one thing, like you find the way that they work in harmony. And I find. Um very different than that is you find the things that uh don't feel like you're doing things that are mm-hmm. in themselves relaxing that they like it looks like a thing to somebody else but to you it's time out so when i'm hitting things with a hammer for a whole afternoon it looks like i'm very busy um but i'm listening to my podcast and just sort of zoning out mm-hmm. and it's not a thing that requires much of me mm-hmm. it's sort of meditative yeah and I find the the trouble I always come up with is um, not just over committing, but not even realizing I'm, I'm over committing until somebody else compares or uh, c- complains about it. You know, because uh, a lot of times, you know, a friend will ask me to do something, and I'll just be like, "Yeah, no problem. I'm going to help you out." Or I start doing all these things because I want to learn. Like for example, now when I start to volunteer, usually it's in service of some sort of goal. When I started doing the uh, community research ethics stuff it was because i have a philosophy degree i did my master's in ethics i want to do something relevant to my degree yep. so i found an opportunity to do that uh with the grants committee it was hey i want to be more involved in making my community better and i like doing it through a systems approach kind of deal mm-hmm. but then you suddenly realize your entire calendar gets stacked up and you're trying to balance a home life with a life that you find meaning in and purpose in uh, which you find meaning and purpose at home, but it's the meaning and purpose of your individual vision versus how you're impacting other people. And those can often come into conflict with each other. Yep. Yeah. So it's really, really interesting how the different perspectives shape it. And yet we all still do a lot of things and still be productive and still just keep busy i hate the word keeping busy because it does have that pejorative sense to me okay let's yeah just keep ourselves busy we don't want to sort of well yeah waste when, away well the, when people ask you know like what what are you up to i you know, just, i just keep myself busy which in some sense is true like i don't like being idle i mean there are times when i binge watch for example this past weekend i binge watched season seven of Mad Men. like in that mm-hmm. was that was still being idle because I was sitting there watching. I wasn't necessarily doing anything else on the side. Uh, but I like to keep myself doing things and keeping myself active or keeping myself working towards being productive. I think you, you bring up a good point is being idle. I have a strong distaste for being idle. I can't cope with it. We had that when we were trying to talk about this earlier. I'm like, well, we're having a conversation. Could I have something to do with my hands? Mm-hmm. Um, we're just sitting you I really need to get some Legos for Ryan. Oh I, was, I was actually yeah, just thinking uh, the needles and yarn. He just sits there. Yeah, yeah. your mom can teach me to knit. It'll be oh, great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, no, for me, like, like the, the notion of busyness for me isn't even the pejorative. It's sort of a source of deep existential fear. Uh, like, as an artist, as a person who makes art and music and writing and things like that, um, when people are like, oh, that you're just sort of keeping busy, the notion that, that, it, that it is busy work... I mean, part it is. It is. It is work. It is creative work to keep my brain working and to keep me sane. Because um, I have done sort of you know six month stints where I didn't make anything and I just sort of get really, really cr- like cranky and withdrawn. But it is not a thing I make just for me. 
it is it, it, I mean and I don't ever want it to be that I want to make it for other people I want to make it for other people to read or enjoy or learn from or laugh at or whatever because that is in in a huge part what gives it meaning for me so the notion that it is just busy work or 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 make work is something that I don't I I, I don't want to say I find it deeply objectionable uh, I do sort of get my ba- it does sort of get my back up um, but it is it is something that that it hurts my feelings uh, because it sort of devalues all the time and work I put into all the things that I'm doing. <laughs> so, uh, but as for how we do it, um, my solution is to sleep less. Um, I don't, I don't do it on purpose. I have a problem of when I have a thing, I tend to not, I, I can't not do it most of the time. Yeah. I have few scheduled events, but most of the things I do are spontaneous and plentiful. And it's just that I need to get it out so that I can think about something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still noodling away at like the hacks side of it in terms of finding a system that ultimately keeps me going. Uh, calendars work, so mm-hmm. making sure to schedule specific time uh, or devote specific time to it. So, for example, podcasting, playing D and D, those have a place in the the calendar. Um, Oddly enough, using Instagram is starting to help because uh, I don't use Instagram on like a a self-facing narcissism. Mine is more the traditional, I take pictures of the things I see, not take pictures of myself in the context of what I'm doing. So for me, I use Instagram to put out into the world, hey, I'm doing this, I'm making this, um... I'm improving myself in this way. I mean, that's what the tag is on Instagram. Things I uh, make, fix, find interesting in massive pictures mm-hmm. of my dog. Yeah. So <laughs> Seriously, if you want to see cute dogs, Ryan's Instagram. It was specifically one cute dog. Yeah. Gus, uh, Gus is Huck's awesome. Instagram is the place to do it. So, yeah, whenever I make stuff, bake bread. I used to do it on Twitter, but now I, because Instagram is a wonderful visual medium i can't yeah. do that mm-hmm. I, you know yeah. when i'm playing D, i'll snap a picture of you know the character tokens or my dice or whatever and share that out because those tags allow you to allow people to share and and reach out to the community so if i sure. rpg other people who play rpgs might search that out and then there's yeah. a, a ad hoc community that's developed in it right better at social media than the rest of us well um I'm, i've also been seduced by the instagram because it is photo based and i yeah. find it much easier than trying to come up with a clever thing to say and i'm still trying to be a good photographer i don't know why i'm so hung up on it but i no, want to be seriously instagram makes it dead nuts simple with all of the filters <laughs> you don't even have to be a good thing because you can just i know throw i know that's it's a lot like a lot of it's self-consciousness but well, yeah that, that well a lot of doing things that people are the reason people don't do things is they're they are self-conscious they're yes. terrified of doing it badly yes right? or getting yelled at when we were in the quartz lab and we were cutting the wood i honestly was expecting like I don't know, the, the lab boss to come in and be like, why, lab you, you haven't been trained on that table saw, why are you using that? Ravi showed me how to use that table saw one time, and so yeah. it was fine. I'm just um, used to the high school mentality, of, yeah. you know, like, your, your teacher's gonna yell at you until you've been properly briefed safely. <laughs> no, for, for me, it's, it's, like, I, I do schedule a lot of time, because unscheduled time will inevitably be get filled with video games, um, or, or just sort of, like, if I have no idea what to do, I will just sort of fill it with something, and then I will feel bad about it later, so I schedule a lot of my time, so at least I have a plan. But, I mean, and then if I want to deviate from that plan, I at least had a plan. Yeah, I, I find the opposite. If I schedule time, it stresses me out. If I want to do the things that, like, I want to do, mm-hmm. scheduled time makes me stressed, and then I fear and dread that time, and then... It, end up not doing the thing that I was planning to do it is much better for me to leave a big swath of time open and go oh I got some time I'm gonna go make my thing yeah see yeah, I will fill that time with Skyrim uh, quite easily and so the result is like if I want to get you know it, part of it I think is, is is my stuff sticks to a lot more schedules than yours like I gotta yeah, get a blog know. post up every Wednesday I gotta get three videos up every week uh, at least uh, at least two uh, usually three you know there's there's X amount of things that I require myself to do every week. Yeah, and a lot of what I do, if I try to force it, 
it will simply I will simply ruin a lot of material. Exactly. Yeah. It comes with a cost if I try to make myself do something that I'm mm-hmm. not into. Oddly enough, video gaming is one thing that I want to do more of and playing board games. I have a hard time at the moment. I was I was playing a lot of uh, Borderlands and stuff a couple months ago. I have a hard time giving myself permission to play video games. I find myself that as productive as it is or as therapeutic as it might be, I find right now I have a hard time giving myself permission to use my time in that way because in the end it's like I didn't produce anything. I had an experience. You know, I had some Let me interesting... tell you about achievements <laughs> chivos matter they do you heard it here first everyone but and i do i sleep less that is like, like I, I i'm not joking I, I sleep about i don't know five five hours six hours a night i don't recommend it no i sleep more it i have works, the opposite strategy it works for me um because i sort of like as a regular human being don't need as much sleep yeah, and I'm entirely the opposite. Yeah, I, I purposely sleep more so that when I'm done work, I'm not exhausted. Yes, and I can go and do something. When it comes to sleeping for me, I'm trying really hard to be an adult. I try to um, disengage from technology, you know, within an hour or so of me going to bed and read and in bed, you know, with soft lighting and stuff. Because the problem is, is I'm not a morning person. And sticking to the nine to five thing. I'm acutely aware and I become guilty when I'm not productive at work. Uh, I write uh, weekly journal entries at work of what I've accomplished for the week, how I felt like I worked. Mm-hmm. So if my boss ever got a handle of that, she probably like scold me a lot for, for writing in her diary at work. No, no, no. It's a work diary. That's the thing. It's a work diary. I use it to take notes and, and keep track of things. And just the self-confession that I always Coming feel like... Coming next season, the diary podcast. Yeah. Uh, the Huck Diary. No, as, as your boss, I'd be like, oh my god, this is the best leverage I've ever seen. This man will work himself to death and will never demand more money because he feels like he's doing a terrible job. I know. <laughs> I own him. But the, but the funny thing is, is I still... Ryan's a terrible boss. I, still, I should not be in charge of humans. I still hit my deadlines. I still, like, people are genuinely... Like, well, I, I perceive them to be genuinely appreciative of my work and appreciative, appreciative of the work that I take off of their plates, right? The chairs and whatnot. I do a lot of the coordinating and administrative stuff for all the meetings and so they just yeah. they get the information they walk in the meeting they give their contribution they get the minutes later and they're done with it right you know the, I, they don't have to micromanage me and when i go to them for collaboration they're very game for it but i usually feel like i could be so much more productive if i you know didn't have a feedly account because i love I love reading about different things and like taking different ideas and try to incorporate it into my life or my work or anything like that. I justify it as personal development, even though it's really hard to justify reading Dilbert every day. And <laughs> there's a lot of reasons it's hard to justify reading Dilbert <laughs> yeah, every day. Much. Um, <laughs> yeah, work work wise, I'm sort of the, the opposite. Um, I am perfectly happy to like, you know, spend two minutes. It's probably I guess like Ryan and I saw uh, Ryan Consul and I solve problems all day at work. Um, so even when you're not doing it, you're, you're like not directly looking at it. You're still working the problem. Yeah. And sometimes you need a moment to defrag that like a problem has gotten tight and you're not, and a knot in your head Yeah, and you need to go to somebody else's problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and that requires not working for a few minutes. And also part of work is engaging with the people around you is to make an environment where you want to be alive and interact with other humans and foster those relationships so that you can solve problems together. And some of that involves talking about food and board games. Yes. Yes. Mm. Candy. Mm. <laughs> board games. Mm. Productivity. <laughs> that is encapsulated us, I believe. <laughs> I guess the last question we were looking at was how we don't do it. I mean, how we how we fail at stuff. I will I will wager that none of us gets everything done that they want to (laughs) whether that's falling behind on um say making videos and blog posts i don't know what you're talking about i don't have a (laughs) schedule i can't fall behind (laughs) but yeah in my case getting ready for D D and being as prepared as i want along with writing more blog posts and making more videos and huck 
I assume, keeps a careful diary of all of his faults that I have yet to find. But when I do, he's on this podcast forever. I really should start doing the Benjamin Franklin journaling of these are the virtues I want to work on for this. That week. sounds horrible and depressing, but okay. Yeah. I mean, it seems to really you seem to really rock it. So just just go out and be in this I world. Self. You shine on, you crazy I, I, diary diamond. I can diamond. make you a good uh, self-flagellator. Yeah, I have, we we have the skills. I can teach you to make a good self-flagellator. <laughs> yeah, you could beat yourself with your own creation. Maybe we'll make that as a, a separate vlog post. Yeah, and the next time we're next in season lab. vlog of Huck beating himself. <laughs> uh, I would say the thing that the the biggest reason why I fail is. Future Ryan is unreliable, and present Ryan has absolutely no willpower. We did a I, I did a blog post a few years ago on uh, moral obligations to future people. Yeah, so usually I end up putting stuff off to Future Ryan, who has an entirely different concern set. Mm-hmm. And, future Ryan's got a lot on his plate, and present Ryan usually ends up misjudging the importance. Or you know, you guys time. could do form a Ryan Gestalt. I'm really good at pre- at uh, dealing with present Ryan. Yeah, so so I assume that future Ryan is not going to do shit. So if I don't do it now, it will never get done. Yeah, that's why I put, highly mistrustful of future. Ryan. No, that's yeah, why no, I, I future put, Ryan is incompetent. I put the only way I address that. So like the way I avoid failure is I have to put a system in place. So for example, for the gym, when I'm going to the gym, the only way to do it is I bring my work clothes with me to work and I don't go home until I've hit the gym. It's mm-hmm. just it's a non negotiable thing. Although when I pick up the dog, it's different. I have to take him home, so I have to go home first, right? But the idea is, I know that if I go home and I take my pants off, that's it. I'm done. Like there's no way for me to motivate myself to go out and go to the gym. So I have to put a system in place. And now that the gym thing can run on its own with its own system, I'm now going to start looking at nutrition. Not going on a diet, just finding a way to work it in so that I enjoy it. It works for me, and it's not. It's not adding additional work to my load because mm-hmm. then you yeah. just – it's so easy to fall off the bandwagon if, if you rely on willpower alone or motivation alone. I feel alone. like you get on the bandwagon and fall off the wagon. Fair enough. I'm probably extremely lazy with my If language. you know, just leave, a, just leave the answer in the comments. Yeah. That's yeah, it. no, I mostly fail uh, because in order to do things, I, I sacrifice – much of the standard maintenance of life. So my life looks like a disaster because it's just to, like I don't have time to clean my apartment. Why would I do that? I can tell what with your fancy new haircut and your lovely jacket and your uh, cleanly shorn face. It's not clean shaven. Yeah. This was two months. Uh, like I'd been meaning to get a haircut for two months. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I've uh, for me, system... Once a month on a Saturday, it's the only time I can get out to the barber. I go see Mick the barber. He cuts my hair. I shave twice a week, once on Monday and once on Thursday. Wow, you really you, yeah you systems. Have system. I have, I yeah. I am so bad at systems. We do need to be just all. This Ryan. is this is this is what we have here. We have lawful Ryan and chaotic Ryan. It, it, yeah, it's not. My attitude is definitely not. It, it has to be this way. It is just that if is that works system for you, like, that works. And, I've attempted yeah. to build systems and then they collapse after two weeks because I'm aware that I built that system for myself. Yeah. And thus I am uh, allowed to break it. Yeah. And that's the problem with uh, the, the flip side problem of like life hacking and whatnot is usually you're, you spend so much time tweaking the system that you never actually work on anything productive, but you feel like it. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is the other side of it where, you know, like, there are sometimes really good ideas that you can incorporate into your life. You may not need to figure out 50 uses for a um, you know, bag or chip clip bag or whatever, but... If you could think of Everybody just puts that on their clip. wang, right? Yeah, it's a wang clip. It's a wang clip. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to learn how to floss or whatever, you attach it to your mirror so that you see it in the morning or... The, the, you know? the wang clip? No, wang clip. I said flossing. Oh, if you want to have yes. flossing as a hobby, you put it in there or... If flossing is your hobby, please leave a comment. <laughs> a system. I meant to say system. I'm tired. Leave it. <laughs> no, no, your flossing hobby. Tell us more about it. Yeah. I, wanted... I, I am excited to know like the nuances and different techniques. I'm really Next excited. season. Are there different strokes? Is Next season, like... Huck's Flossing Diary. <laughs>
He feels as though he's been flossing inadequately lately, but... Uh, My dentist thinks so. His dentist thinks so, and he feels like he's been betraying his teeth because of it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, to bring it back, yeah. So that's that's one of the ways that I deal with it. For me, systems and order helps me. It's not that I'm compelled to do it. It's just it seems to be the only way I can do it. I never realized I am chaotic. As soon as you put systems and order into it, I immediately feel I need to rebel. I'm yep. like, screw this system. Chaotic Ryan. Now we need to get other Ryan on the podcast so we can be neutral Ryan. Neutral Ryan? He's That'll pretty neutral. <laughs> no, my, 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 my sort of way to do it is... Um, I used to tell people that my only real skill is not quitting. I'm pretty good at not quitting at stuff. I'm not great, but I'm pretty good at it. And so when I when I don't want to do it, you know, when I I, I think I, we've talked about this in a, in a video during uh, Vita, but just in sort of in general, when I when I, I get up and I really don't want to do it, I'm like oh, I I gotta write that blog post. I did have that cool topic, and I just but I just I just. I don't even, it's not even, I want to play video games. I just want to sit and do nothing. Or I don't want to go and work out. Or I don't yeah. want to make a video. I don't, you know, I don't want to do band practice tonight. I want to just sort of go home and take a nap and cuddle up with a pizza or whatever it is that you do when you don't do band practice. I'm just like, no. I have to do it. Because if I don't do it, then I'll stop doing it. And then I will be sad. And I know that. And I know that future Jim, who will one day be me, will look back at past Jim and be like, past Jim, what's your problem? And I will be like, I didn't want to. And future Jim will be like, really? Seriously? That's it? And I will feel bad. Because it shouldn't be it. Because the fact that I don't want to is sort of irrelevant. I mean, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I need to do. A lot of this stuff is stuff that... I want to want to do. I want, you know, I, I don't always want to work out every morning, but I do want the things that come along with working out. I, you know, I want to be stronger and have more endurance. I like doing it. It's just, I, and I know that I will like doing it. I just have to get past that first little hurdle and do it. And then it's done. And I move on, and I can move on to the next thing. Um, but there are definitely days... Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Tigwell can be booked for uh, motivational speaking engagements <laughs> uh, at conceptcrucible.com. You can see all of his past talks on Concept, Concept Crucible podcast, where most of the time he's really fucking depressing. But today, very motivational. Yeah, no. Just do it. Well, it's... it's, it's... Also, Nike's gonna sue. Yeah, no, it's 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 just I mean, make yourself do the things you don't want to do because you know they're the things that you need to do. Um, like I said, all I, I all I have to do, all I have to really do, is not quit. I don't have like, like I don't have to you know be like oh I don't have any ideas. I always have ideas for stuff. That's the easy part. What I have to do is not stop editing them or filming them. Or, you know, doing all the, all the, like, like a lot of it is, 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 I love the filming or I love the editing uh, or I love the, the, the thinking up part. But there's a lot of work that goes along with that that, and maybe I don't like so much. I'm trying to sort of, you know, build on it, improve production quality, improve my writing and things like that. But I don't, I just want to do it. And I want all the stuff that comes along with like, you know, being cool and making stuff. But I mean, part of being cool and making stuff is you got to make stuff. Also, you got to be cool. Still working on that one. <laughs> so, I mean, when I fail it, and I do, I sometimes go weeks, I sort of get like super withdrawn. Uh, and so the way I usually do that is I tie it up with another human being. So, I mean... I play in a band with Kaylee, and Kaylee, I know that Kaylee relies on me to sort of push things along, and I rely on her to push me along, and the result is that things happen. I mean, the podcast is the same way. We do the podcast together, mm -hmm. and sometimes I need to push, 
to come up with the, like they're like no 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 we we have to film a podcast. <laughs> so we got to think of something. Yeah. And you know they, like, it's that notion that that I tie it up with other people because uh, we make each other stronger and we make each other braver and brave enough to do the thing that is hard. Once again, Jim at conceptcrucible.com. <laughs> this is amazing. You are definitely the more motivationally aspiring kind because my, my motivation I, tends to come from a much darker place. I take a lot of effing motivation, let me tell you. I, my, my motivation yeah, tends to I get up at 6 in. o'clock and I'm just like, what am I doing awake? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you are motivated primarily by guilt and shame. I am motivated primarily by the sense of wee! And you fear that future Jim uh, will be disappointed in you? Um, them? No, it's a little more nuanced than that, but we'll go with that. Yeah, it well, is, we just got... It is a one-sentence one description it, yeah. of your entire motivational structure. It is the fear that I, I will become know. a future Jim that I would be disappointed in. So, yeah. What do you do? I want to see it. Yeah, you can definitely shoot it to us in either in the comment section or... Or on Instagram. Or on Instagram. Or on Instagram. You can tag Huck on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we'll put my handle down below. I believe and it's... mine. I have one, of course. Huckle, I think. It's okay. We'll put it in the yeah. show notes. We'll throw it down. Yeah, we don't actually need to know our own contact information. No, That's what the internet is in for. The show notes. Yeah. No. We'll fix it in post, guys. Anyway. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And I'm the other Ryan. We're signing off. Stay... Not busy. Don't stay busy. Stay awesome. We don't have a great history of three-way high fives. I, I can't imagine it would go well. That was That's a two-way high five. Week. You guys didn't... Oh, yeah. We need to get like a, like a high five network. There we go. Yeah. There All we right. go. Mad so skills. We, we just needed more degrees to figure this out. <laughs> this is our best educated podcast. <laughs>